Hey there, so we are still reading from Chosen Children 2021, and we are going to be covering Adopt Speak and Censorship. Adopted people are not allowed ancestry because it might upset somebody. Sandra K. Muser, mother of an open records activist. <sighs> There's a lot to cover here. Adopt Speak and Censorship are tactics employed by special interests to manipulate public's perception of adoption by controlling terminology. For instance, for instance, terms such as birth mothers reduced relinquishing mothers to breeders. Adoption reform activists prefer mother, but to assure clarity, use natural or biological. Um, so I'm going to say that as adoptees, we use first mother or biological. Um, we actually don't use natural as often, um, but as adoptees, you're allowed to use what you want. Just if you're not adopted and you're asking, I would say refer to the adoptee you are speaking with. But biological or first parent is best, if you don't know. Adopt speak, a term coined by this writer, is the practice of inventing and utilizing terminology that reflect half truth and lies about adoption. Promu promulgated by National Council for Adoption and CFA, which AMCOR challenged by fact-checking che statistics with sources published in the Adoption and Donor Conception Factbook on Amazon. In the religious, sorry, in the righteous mind why good people are divided in politics and religion, author Jonathan Haidt, professor of psychology at University of Virginia, describes how conservatives are schooled to demonize liberals through use of specific and powerful words outlined in their manual. Go pack language, a key mechanism of control. Words used in Newt Gingrich's speeches. For instance, abuse of a power, betray, bizarre, corrupt, criminal rights, cheat, corrupt, disgrace, radical, traitors, red tape, unionize, waste, welfare, which exemplify Gingrich's Grinch as a good moral psychologist who is at the same time as hypocritical as any politician. So yeah, um, not related to adoption, but this does happen. If you guys have noticed the way that the U.S. is divided, I mean throughout the existence of the United States, but specifically more recently in the last, you know, six years or more, the way that the conservatives speak versus the the democratic liberals speak um, will vary, will vary. Now, granted, at the end of the day, there's problems in both sides. It is very telling the way that one side uses their power to hold over other people, even though it is very... Um, Mostly, and again, it's not one one specific side or the other. They're both problematic. Um, but one side is a little bit more on the individualistic. Um, they're all about the me, 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 and not about the us as a society. Um, but when people hold power, they don't often do as good as they say they're going to, and that's a problem. Okay, that being said. Similar, similarly, sim, oh my god, I cannot speak. Similar, similarly, the Adoption Information Institute, headquartered in Bennington, Vermont, originally founded in 1996 as Celibate Adoption, and which does not identify its president or members on its website, promotes the their journalist guide to adoption, indicating a contributor to the book is Adam Pertin, Pertman an adopter and executive director of the Evan B. Donaldson Institute. They claim that their guide is the best unbiased resource and research to help journalists understand the adoption process and ethical adoption practices. But in an attempt to satisfy all sides, it was written so that journalists will use more accurate and appropriate language and determine when adoption is germane to coverage. The guide emphasizes the crisis in foster care, teen parenting, and infant homicide. 
buzzwords used by the adoption industry to promote adoption. Now, adoption censorship is the deliberate banning of certain adoption language, stories, or information perceived to be negative. Ooh, we can talk about that all day. For example, when Warner Brothers writers and producer decided maybe I'm adopted would be a cute title for their planned fall 2001 sitcom about a teenager with a zany family, including a father with a drinking problem, and who sometimes wondered that very thing little did Warner Brothers anticipate the firestorm by protest by of protest by apparently organized adoption supporters. In July 2001, all promotion of Maybe I'm Adopted was replaced by Maybe It's Me. This writer posted a message to Warner Brothers suggesting that the late political satirist George Carlin and then update his famous comedy routine, Seven Dirty Words You Can't Say on TV, to eight words, including adoption. Uh, WB's sitcom slammed Variety 2001 was where that was sourced from. I honestly don't remember that happening, but maybe... I know there was other movies that were problematic during that time, but yeah, I don't remember that one. Since then, the comeback, because I'm adopted, or maybe you're adopted, has not only gained acceptance, but also got laughs when uttered by Jay Leno's on ABC's Tonight Show. I hate those comments. I really do. Sorry, I'm... They're... They're so problematic because these people don't understand what it's like to be adopted. And they think it's a big-ass joke. And it's not. It's a very painful and triggering. And like, yeah, I get it. Some things are going to be triggering to others and not to, to the whole society. And I'm not try, trying to say like, oh, but we should center everything. But we can say things without harming other people. Even in comedy. You can still get laughs. Now, if an adopted, like, I think it would make more sense, like, if an adoptee said it and, like, made it a joke because we can do that with dark humor, I think it's completely different when someone who's not part of the triad at all does things like that. It's not funny at all. Okay, anyway. Um, and Drew Carey, Colin Maltry, Ryan Stiles, and other people on whose line is it anyway use those lines. And I used to like that show. I haven't watched it in a long while, but I don't remember anything like that. But I'm sure it happened. I didn't see every episode. So, conservatives might say that they are willing to find some find common ground to negotiate, but will never use the term compromise. Adoption reformers have produced their own language guides. As described by Wikipedia, the Internet Explo uh, Encyclopedia, and by Jessica del balzo in her book unlearning adoption in which she categorizes preferred adoption language pal and honest adoption language how which guides tre tread on ref freedom of the press by attempting to dictate language that reflects bias pro or con another case in point is that of martin tinkwuff the media referred to as an adoptee accused of murdering his adoptive parents but upon his and his attorney's decision to refrain from identifying Tinkloff as being adopted, the word A word never again appeared in news stories about his child, conviction, appeals, and release. In another example, Wikipedia lists many serial killers with the mention of their adoptive status. Nevertheless, pressure must have come to bear the regard to Wikipedia's removal of a contributor's mention of the adopted murderers in an article that Wikipedia evidently had published but then edited with the following explanation. Adoptee murderers removed from the article quite as many people as are adoptees, so of course you're going to find them among murderers as well. As such, this remark proves nothing and only accounts for sens sensationalism, uh, which was posted by Tim O'Han... Castillo, Wikipedia in 2004. Hans Castillo neither defines 
quite as many nor indicates the source of his conclusions. Next, Wikipedia's page on adopted child syndrome states, the term has never achieved acceptance in the professional community, but amidst the fact that it has been historically significant defense that saved some adoptees from the death penalty. As late as the 1980s, fear of breaching confidentiality laws was so great that most newspapers nationwide did not permit adoptees to seek parents or mothers to seek adoptees, as in fact the A word was seldom permitted in any context in media, if it would be avoided. Yet the Los Angeles Times had already begun publishing Baby Broker's Baby Wanted ads in its personal column. Now, Facebook and other social media is a haven for searching adoptees and birth parents who share their stories and find support in members. They not only have to solve their own search puzzles, puzzles but also press legislators change archaic state-sealed adoption records, laws by exchanging information and soliciting petition and bill support via Facebook groups such as adoption activists thinking outside the box. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm part of these groups and it is so important. Also, TikTok, big. There is a whole bunch of us and we are looking for reform because we are the children that are affected, not just by legislator, but by these feelings. And we want our voices to be heard and not shut down. However, we still have a significant backlash because society does not understand. They're still coming from the point of view that adoption is beautiful and it's all rainbows and butterflies. When it is not, you are taking a child from their biological parent and that is going to have separation trauma. Not just for the child, but also for the birth parent. Anyway, we're gonna move on to the next chapter.